Hello, everybody. Welcome to Experience Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. I'm so excited as usual, and I thank God for the opportunity we have for us to fellowship together, you know, to break the bread of life. And you know, this bread of life that we break together is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lord our God. You know, first of all, the Bible said in 1 John in chapter 1, he said, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. And then Jesus, speaking as God Almighty himself, said in John chapter 4, he said, God, the Father, seeketh for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth, because God is spirit. And but when Paul came on by the Holy Spirit, Paul declared in Philippians chapter 3, verse 3, saying that we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and put no confidence at all in the flesh. So we are the Father's fulfilled, expected desire for spirit worshipers. Praise God. So I want to welcome you. Thank God for Jesus. Now quickly, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, let me encourage you, you know, after this broadcast, please go to my YouTube channel and press that subscription button. Just subscribe. We have loads of teachings there that will be a blessing of help to you in Jesus' name. And then right now, I'm going to need you to tag somebody. You know, if you look under your, uh, this thing there on the Facebook, you will see on the right side the button for share. You can share it. Share this teaching. Share it. It is free. Let it be a blessing to people. Don't keep good things for in the kingdom to yourself alone. Because all of us will give account to Jesus for, it, for not sharing it with others to be blessed. Especially the body of Christ. Alright, so having said that, let's hit the ground running in the name of Jesus. Today, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, is the first Sunday of a new year. And the Lord has put a word in my spirit for every one of us. Remember, to, uh, we, we saw during the crossover watch night into the new year service, we saw that there is a path that is carved out for the just. And this path, to navigate it, is faith. He said, for uh, the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Then, the Bible now says, in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, as it is written, he said, the just shall live by faith. So there's a path to live or to walk in that path. All that is required is faith. You know, we looked at that. If you, if you were not uh, privileged to hear that teaching, please go and check that teaching. It will be a blessing to you, I'm telling you. You know, it's on YouTube. All right. But as a build up, today as the first Sunday in, in this beautiful year of our Lord Jesus Christ, um, uh, I want to say this, uh, that um, uh, I, I wrote something here. Uh, let me just quickly read it. I said, Today, by the grace of God, I want to speak to your spirit, man. I want to speak to, uh, you know, your spirit, your heart, you know, uh, because today being the first Sunday as we begin our journey into this beautiful year. And I pray your eyes of understanding will be enlightened. Comprehension will be yours in Jesus' name through this teaching today in the name of Jesus. Um, because it is very important for me to say this. Here we go again. You know, here we go. What do I mean by here we go again? Um, uh, you need to free yourself. You know, you need to free yourself. You know, everybody. That's the, the, the word, the message in my heart for everybody. You need to free yourself. Do not, uh, do not fall for all those New Year's traditional assignments. You know, that... Church denominations, GOs, bishop, pastors, prophets, that they hand out over to the people of God. Don't fall for it this year. You know, one would have, one would have expected that you have grown above that. You know, you cannot be, uh, 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 you know, held with that anymore. You know, one would have expected. I, I expect and I trust God. You know, uh, but to refresh us and to encourage us. To keep this path that is for the just 
And this path is supposed to be walk in only by faith. You know, so don't fall for the, the pressure of church denominations. Those things are man-made. Most of those things that they, they, they come up with as tradition for the church, they are man-made. They are not the scripture. You are not giving traditions. What we are giving are the scriptures. All scriptures are given. That's what the Bible said. Not traditions of men. You know, not denominational packagings or ideas of what Christianity should be or how to approach a new year should be. So I wrote here, I said, uh, first of all, a believer is not bound by a new year. A believer, once you are born again, you are being set free from the law or the traditional principles set by men for entering a new year. You have been set free from it. A, a believer is not bound by a new year. Therefore, do not allow yourself to be subjected uh, to a new year as its servant. You are not a servant of a new year. So, don't allow anyone to bring you under the servitude of entering a new year. Don't do that. Please, I beg you in the name of Jesus. I beg, we need to grow. We need to move above these things. We need to go beyond these things. It is time to leave some things behind. You know, as, as the Lord, by the Holy Ghost, is beginning to shed more light on the, on the truth of our redemption in Christ Jesus. First of all, let's look at the first scripture. Galatians chapter 4, verse 8. 9 to 11. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 9 to 11. Look at what it says. Let's look at, let, let's look at it. The Bible says, but now, that means there was a time before. So we're not looking at the time before. We're looking at now. He said, but now, after that you have known God, now that you know God, now you know God, you, are you getting this thing? Now that you know God, or rather, are known by God. So it's not just that we know God. God knows that we are a member of God's family right now. We belong to the household of faith. We belong to God's household. As a matter of fact, we have, we have been so elevated by God that we have come into the class of God. The class of the God kind. Thank you, Father. And then we have come into the, the heavenly decision-making body. We are members of the Senate of Heaven. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, how turn you again? Don't turn back again to weak and beggarly elements. Now that you have known God, now that you have come into the God kind class or the class of the God kind, now that you have become a member of the decision making body of heaven, the highest member of the decision making body of heaven. The Bible said in Hebrews 12, he said, for you have come to Mount Zion the city of the living God, to the general assembly of the church of the firstborn, registered in heaven. Don't, don't you get it? He said, why do you want to turn back to weak and beggarly elements? Weak and beggarly elements. He said, where unto you desire again to be in bondage? So the weak and beggarly elements, are to, they, they bring Christians back into bondage. They put you in cage. They slow you down. They distract you. They hinder your walk in the path that is carved out for the just. He said, now that you are born again, now that you are a child of God, now that you have knowledge, now that you, you are of God, now that you are a member of the decision making in heaven, don't go back into the same weak and beggarly elements that you have been delivered from. Otherwise, you will be going back into bondage. So the idea is that, or the question is that, what are, what are these weak and beggarly elements that we should never submit ourselves to again? Verse, verse 10. Look at verse 10. Thank you, Lord Jesus. See verse 10. He said, you observe days and months and times and years. Don't, don't, don't join your GO. Don't join your bishop. 
Don't join your prophet, your pastor, your apostle. Don't join him or her to make you to, to, to make you feel or think that a new year is so great. You need to have this heavy spiritual preparation for it. The idea of that is that mentally speaking, you will become a slave. You are becoming a slave to that new year. Ah! It's an insult to the Godhead. It's an insult to the member of the body of Christ. Don't so celebrate. Oh, let me not use the word celebrate. Don't so elevate a new year that you become a servant of it. No, please, I beg you. A thousand times, no. I beg you in the name of Jesus. Look, people did that Last year, from the 1st of January of last year that passed, and then they still had the challenge of the COVID. And because they celebrate, they, they elevated a year so powerfully, you know, that they made it like a, a duty, a burden that needs to be faced for them to be able to have a good year. COVID-19 rendered almost all of them useless. A lot of people didn't know how to navigate their life. Are you seeing why the Lord is sending me to you right now? Please, I beg you in the name of Jesus. Throw away or put aside your religious mindset for now. Let's look at the scriptures together. You know, they, don't, 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 don't elevate a year too, long, too much. Now, Paul now says in verse 11. Put verse 11. Watch what he said. Watch it. He said, I am afraid of you. Anybody who begins to elevate a, a new year so powerfully... That you now make the body of Christ, the church, born again Christian, believers, to begin to do as if, if you don't do X, Y, Z, this year will not go well. This year will not fall into place. Things will not happen this year. Oh, Paul said, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. He said, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. He said, I'm scared. I'm scared of these people who are now trying to make Christianity. They are making a new year. I see me so powerful. More than what Jesus has done for us. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God, please. Oh God, please. Believers, wake up. Wake up. Because here we go again. They are going to declare seven days fasting for the new year. 21 days fasting for the new year. 50 days fasting for the new year. 100 days fasting for the... What are you doing? What are, now, now, somebody will say, what is ABJ saying? Are you saying that we shouldn't do fasting? No. Did you hear that from my mouth? I didn't say don't do fasting. But I'm saying don't do fasting all because of a new year as though you have become a servant of a year. Aya! Agadabo Shataba! Don't do it! Don't do it. Last year, some denomination declared 50 days fasting. Some declared 100 day fasting. Some declared 21 day fasting. Some of us did not do fasting for last year. And we came out tops. You know why? We have found what was given to us. The Bible said all scripture was given to us. So what was given to us in the scripture is a path. It's a path for the just. And that part is only navigated. That part is only walked, can only be walked by faith. Woo! Glory be to God. I'm sure you heard me. God punish the devil. That part can only be walked. Why do you want anybody to subject you to going to church every day for 21 days? Because we are afraid. 2000, uh, and I mean, this year might not produce. So you need to come and pray. Every, and uh, let me tell you, even when they go for this service, this fasting and prayer for 21 days, for 50 days, they don't go to pray. All they go to hear is preaching. It's the man of God that is preaching. It's when he preach, 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 preach. They say, you know, oh yeah, everybody open your mouth and pray. You now pray and then you give offering. You see what I'm saying? We need to free ourselves from anybody that want to drag us into the idea of, of the way we used to live our life before we get, got born again. It's be, before we got born again, we were afraid of a new year. 
We were always afraid. Oh, this year, let me not die this year. Let my family not die this year. Let protection happen to me this year. Let blah, 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 blah. Look, there are so many. <laughs> now that you have known God, now that you are a decision member of the highest order of, in heaven, don't go back, don't fall back into those beggarly things. They are too weak for Christianity. They are weak and beggarly. That's what the Bible calls them. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. I challenge you not to fall for it. Look, I am challenging you this year. Don't participate in that fasting and prayer. Eh, eh, apostle, why? Why are you saying they shouldn't participate? Let me tell you. Those kind mindset, those mentalities, they weaken your faith. I'm telling you. You don't do fasting for this new year. You will see how your faith will be so energized. Because... You are not relying on your fasting. You are relying on the finished work of Jesus. Oh, see how your faith will be fresh and very high. Your faith will be so fresh and skyrocket. I'm telling you. Watch. Let's, let's go on. Let's go on some more. Let's go on some more. Ah, my God, Rabba, Sota, Griaba. In Romans chapter 3, the Bible said in verse 20. Romans 3, 20. I am not talking to religious people here. Because a religious mind is trapped. A man or woman whose mind is filled with religious activities, that mind is trapped. And the mind is in bond that mind is in bondage. So Paul said to that mind, he said that he has bestowed labor on them in vain. He said, I'm afraid of you. I'm afraid of you. That you are still trying to go back to, to what you were born again and delivered from. <laughs> Why should you be fasting for a new year? Why? Why should you be afraid of this year? When the gift of God to you and I is eternal life. <coughs> Excuse me. Why? The Bible said the gift of God to us is eternal life. We, we, we don't live by year anymore. Oh. And they got so tagaya. Gara 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 a year does not dictate our function anymore. No. We, we are too mysterious for the year to dictate our function. Are you understanding what I'm saying? We are too mysterious for any year to dictate the function of a born-again Christian. You see, but the general overseers, the GOs, the pastors, the bishops, they are the ones confusing the body of Christ and dragging the body of Christ back down the drain, the line of bondage. You know, so people's faith is weak. People can't wake up in the morning, give thanks to God, and move out, knowing that as I go out today, I won't, I won't come back empty. People can't do that. Now, their faith is so weak that they have to look for a mountain to go and lock themselves up. They have to look for one, one, one mountain somewhere in Oshu State, in Ikoi Mountain, in uh, whatever mountain. To go, and to, to go and punish themselves in order for God, for, for God to answer them for a new year. No, 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 no. Our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. That we are born again. Our fellowship is with the Father and the Son. Holy Spirit, give my audience understanding in the name of Jesus. I don't care what this, what this year holds. I don't care what this year thinks. That I am in this year. This year has to respect itself. I'm telling you, this year must obey and submit. The year must serve us neat. We have become a member of the Senate of Heaven, the highest decision body. Jesus declared very strongly that you and I we are too invisible to be predicted. Too invisible. We are too invisible to be predicted. This year can't predict us. The devil can't predict us. Witches and wizards can't predict us. Don't start doing fasting and prayer as though the year has upper hand over you. Don't do that. Don't do that. Approach it with faith. He said this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Yay! In John chapter 3, Jesus said he that is born of the spirit. It's like the wind that blow it. Nobody knows where it's coming from. And nobody knows where it's going. This year can't predict us. I'm telling you. Look, there are so many unbelievers this past year that did not do 50 days fasting, 
100 days fasting, yet they are better off. How much more you and I? Yea, we that have the faith of God in our heart. A path was charted for us. A path was carved out for us by God the Father before we came. It is called the path of the just. The just, the word just there means the people who believe in Jesus Christ. So as long as you are a believer in Jesus Christ, I need you to know it is written that the just shall live by faith. Look at Romans chapter 3 verse 20. Thank you, precious Father. Oh, time is going. I got it wrong. Look at it. He said, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in the sight of God. For the law is, for, for the law, say by the law is the knowledge of sin. The law does not reveal God. It doesn't show the mind of God. All the law reveals or teaches is sin. That's all the law teaches. So, when you fall and rest on the law, all you will know or you will have developed is sin consciousness. Very simple. So, the Bible said, therefore, by the deeds, the acts, the practices of the law, by the practices of the law, he said, they shall no flesh be justified in the sight of God. Don't allow anybody to pressure you I'm telling you, don't allow anybody to... It's, it's a religious thing. It's, a, it's, not, it's, not, it's not scriptural. It's not spiritual act for a born-again Christian, for the man in Christ, to be subjected to the fact that he has to do how many days fasting and prayer for a new year to go. It weakens our faith. The fasting is good. The prayer is good. There's nothing wrong with it. But what it does is that it weakens our faith. We become weakened by faith. We, we become a slave, a servant of a new year, of a new month, of a new day. Don't you get it? We become servants. Oh, oh, look at Muslims. They're not doing 50 days fasting, seven days fasting for the new year. Yeah, they are living better than most Christians. They are most of our religious uh, uh, leaders have put the church into so much bondage. They have, they have sentenced the church into bondage. And, but the Lord is sending me to my generation to bring release, to ease the burden, to free you from that burden. He said, therefore, look at this translation, GNT translation. He said, for no one is put right in God's sight by doing what the law requires. Yay! Nobody is put right in God's sight by doing what the law requires. That you have gone to uh, uh, do religious activities does not mean that the year will go right for you. It doesn't mean that. The year will go right for you to the level of your faith that you have decided to walk in. Whoa! You need to write that down. The year will go right for you before God to the level of your faith that you have decided to walk in. The Bible said in 1, John, 1 Peter chapter 1, in verse 5. Quickly, put it please. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. Watch this. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. See what it says. It says you are kept by the power of God through faith. You are kept by God's power to the level, the degree of the faith you have chosen to walk in. Yay! Wallahi, this year, I will not do one fasting this year. But this year, likes it or not, it must submit to me everything I require. Angalaba Shata. That's a higher level of, fast, uh, of, of faith. I mean, of, of life. It's a higher level. It's a higher level of life. I've decided... In the name of Jesus Christ. Look, my faith in Jesus is so powered that I cannot see any negative thing come my direction. Yea, everything will work together for my good. I am not going to punish my body. I will not in any way punish myself. Never. Not this year. I, will, I refuse to, to put my trust in punishing my body so as for God to move on my behalf. No, Victor James has escaped that. Every day, don't escape. I've escaped that level. I am no more in that level. 
I'm going to walk in the consciousness of my resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ, my Lord and my King. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. I am so going to rest in Him. I'm so going to rest in Jesus that even life will, will tremble for my sake. That's the dimension. The Holy Ghost is bringing the church of God. Nobody is going to hold us down. I'm not talking to somebody here. Somebody wants to go and cast out a devil in, two, in, the, in the new year. He's doing seven days fasting so that he will be able to cast out devil. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why, why, why have you fallen so low? Why have you fallen so low? You mean demon don't respect Faith in the name of Jesus anymore. What they respect is fasting. What are you talking about? God did not highly exalt your fasting. God has highly exalted the name of Jesus. He has given him a name which is above every other name. When you apply faith in the name of Jesus, your condition will naturally, the one that refused to naturally yield, will submit supernaturally. I'm telling you. I came to energize somebody's faith. As we enter, this, two thousand, this new year, as we approach this new year, it is written, the just shall live by faith. Ah, Golabo Sata. He said, you are kept by the power of God through faith. God will keep you to the extent that your faith in him will allow him. Woo! I'm not the one that said it, so why should anybody be angry with me? Because right now, that demon, that satanic spirit, religious spirit, is angry, is angry with me. And I'm so glad. Look, the devil hates me so much. He hates me. I'm telling you. Well, you know, one day, the devil came to me in the bathroom and said to me, he, he said, you, you keep making Christianity very simple. You keep making the gospel very simple. I hate you. I said, well, that's good news. Thank God you hate me because I hate you myself. Me and the devil can't dwell together. That's why the devil is doing everything and all kinds of things, you know, to make sure he hinders this gospel from going from my mouth to my generation. But he can't stop it. He can't stop it. Everyone who came to preach the gospel before me, whatever area they left behind, whatever area they forgot, they, they, they were distracted from because of the spirit of religion, that's what the Lord sent me for. Yay! He sent me to come and empower the body of Christ. To come and free the body of Christ. The body of Christ, we will walk in these last days. Look, let me tell you. Rapture is not going to happen. The way all these men, all these people are preaching about rapture. Everybody is afraid. I dream rapture, uh, rapture happened and they left me behind. That's not rapture. Rapture, look. Rapture, before rapture happened, Lucifer will beg the Father to send Jesus to take us out of here. Because we are so going to come into knowledge. And by that knowledge, our faith in Jesus Christ will be so enhanced that everywhere we enter into, no matter how we wake up on, on the bed, whether on the right side of the bed or on the left side of the bed, as we wake up, we are woken up. Glory be to God. As we wake up, we have, you know, somebody said one time, he said, <laughs> the woman of God said, he said, uh, while Samson was with Delilah, anytime the Philistines came, the Bible said, Delilah will wake Samson up. He said, Delilah, uh, Samson, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He said, Samson will sh get up and shake himself as usual. Because once he shakes himself, the power of God will come on him. And he will go after the Philistines and deal with them. Are you getting it? You know, so he has to shake himself and then the Spirit of God will come on him. He will shake himself, the Spirit of God will come on him. So finally, Samson now went to tell Delilah where his power lies. And where his power lies is his dreadlock. Because he was a Nazarite. He has never shaven his hair. They've never cut his hair as a Nazarite. A symbol of Jesus Christ. There's no need for that die again. That's, that time has passed. All right. So Delilah planned with the Philistines and they shaved Samson's hair. So the Bible said, why Samson slept? And the Philistines came. Delilah woke him again and said, the Philistines are upon you. They have come. He said, Samson stood up, shook himself as as usual, for the spirit of God will come upon him. He said, but he became an ordinary man because the spirit had left. So Samson was arrested. You know, as I was listening to the man of God preach, I said, man of God, you have not finished the preaching, no? You have not finished it. Ah! Two things. Samson's strength was on his head. His dreadlock. The believer's strength is his faith in Jesus. 
The spirit left Samson. Yay! In the New Testament, a word. In the New Testament, this born again Christian, the spirit of God will never leave us. For he has said in Hebrews chapter 12, I mean chapter 13, verse number 5 and 6, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yea, Gabazata. That's why you shouldn't compare me with Samson. Am I making sense? You don't, don't compare yourself with Samson. A greater than Samson is here. Woo! Jesus said, look at him. He said, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, we didn't beg him, he said it. We didn't beg him. He has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake you. He, the spirit of God is not, is not going anywhere. As a matter of fact, in John, Jesus said, the comforter, the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, that he will come and abide in you and dwell with you forever. He lives in you, in you and I. Look, let me tell you. As you are failing, you are failing with the Holy Ghost. As you are succeeding, you are succeeding with the Holy Ghost. As you are going down, you are going down with the Holy Ghost. As you are standing, you are standing with the Holy Ghost. Am I making sense? The Holy Ghost does not leave a born-again Christian. You know, don't follow all those teachings. You know, one man, uh, one man I, uh, I, had, I, I was listening to one man on, on social media. You know, he's so full of zeal, but he does not understand his, the truth. You know, does not does not understand the truth. He said he knows when the Holy Ghost has left him, and he knows when the Holy Ghost returns. I said, what are you talking about? This guy is talking hogwash. This is complete nonsense. Holy Ghost leaves, leave to where, leave to where. When the Bible said in Ephesians one, you are sealed with him. The seal of God over every born again Christian is the Holy Ghost, and nobody can break that seal. Nobody can break it. Just like the days of Noah. As soon as Noah and his family enter into the ark, the Bible says God locked the, the door of the ark. So that both Noah and the devil and all the men that are drowning, none of them is able to open the door. <laughs> Look at it. He said, I will beg the father. This is Darby translation. He said, I will beg the father. He will give you another comforter. That comforter is the Holy Ghost. That he may be with you forever. The Holy Ghost is not living. The reason the spirit left to come on Samson was because Samson is a type and shadow. Samson is not the real thing. Jesus is the real thing. So when you come to God through Jesus Christ, you have entered an eternal security. Never to be undone. Hey, I'm Ogadagayada. Let me tell you. Every time you fail, like I said before, you fail with the Holy Ghost. You don't fail away from him. You f Every time you fall, you fall with the Holy Ghost. You don't fall away from him. Look. <laughs> Woo! Glory be to God. The only person that is stranded is the devil. Not a born again Christian. I'm not talking to somebody here. Every time you feel frustrated, you are frustrated with the Holy Ghost. So get out of it. He said God's power is available to you to the degree of your faith. Put it, put it up again, daddy. That first Peter chapter 1 verse 5. The power of God is available to you to the degree of your faith. Not the degree of your fasting. Not the degree. Ayadaga, Sotoboya, Emegregado, Satabaya. Not the degree of, 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 of your Bible reading or your Bible study. It's good to read the Bible. It's good to study. I study a lot. Believe me, you can ask my family. I study a lot. And ah, when it comes to the word of God, I study. And, you know, when you hear my teaching, you know I study now. You can't, you, you can't know these things and teach these things uh, by just looking at the, the ceiling or the, the, uh, the sky. You know, you have to study. So I say with all humility, I study. Oh, yeah, I study. I study. You know, I study and I, 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 I depend on the Holy Spirit to help to open the scriptures to me. You know, look at it. He said, God, he said, you are kept by the power of God. God is the one keeping you and I. But he will exercise the power, this keeping power, to the degree of our faith. Ah! Magotarade and grossatabaya. Holy Ghost, open the eyes of the understanding of these ones and flood it with understanding. Enlighten their eyes. Bring comprehension like never before for this new year. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God will keep you this year to the degree of your faith. Don't fall back on the works of the law. Don't fall back on the works of the law. Don't think because you have not done fasting 
That business is not going to go through. No. A thousand times no. Ask God in the name of Jesus. By faith. By faith. You Ayaga. Bazato Kolabada. E Graga. Susandele. E Tulaba. Yeke. Agula Tegi Sataba. Even if you came back late in the night and you were too tired to pray and you woke up the next day in the morning to go for a meeting, a crucial meeting, and because you are running late, you, you didn't spend enough time in praying. As you are going, blowing tongues. You don't have to be in a particular place to pray. You don't have to kneel down to show that you are praying. The Holy Ghost is inside of you. You have the life of God in you. Eternity is in you. Oh yeah, in immortality is what you carry. As you go blowing tongues, and the label shatter gadaga. Why you are driving in gradoga so so kokriya gadaga? The Bible said in Ephesians chapter six, in verse eighteen, he said, "Pray with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, blowing tongues. Stay in the spirit." Andoraba shakadaga. Look, as I'm going this morning, this contract will be delivered. This this meeting will go well. I don't care how I feel. How I feel does not matter. Look at it. He said, "Praying always with all prayer and supplication." We are in the spirit. Stay in the spirit. Now, now I feel like coming out of my skin. I, I'm telling you, I feel this thing upon me. That devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. Look, this year, we have we are all the soto. We are so persuaded that this year every good thing we desire will come on the table for our sake. In the name of Jesus Christ. We refuse to back down. We know he whom we have believed and we are persuaded. We are persuaded concerning Jesus. We are persuaded concerning Jesus. Are you here? A lot of people are doing religious activities. That's what they are doing. That's why by February, by March, April, May, any time in the year, you see they fall apart again. But those of us who have come into under, an understanding of what God is doing in these last days, we have kept the devil bound. We pinned him down. And he, and we have said to him, this far he has gone. He will go no further. Ah, yeah. Even when you disappoint us, we refuse to be disappointed. You see, that's how dangerous we have become by faith. <laughs> we have become, this year, leave that tip. We, so, we have become so dangerous by faith that even when you promise to help us and you, change, you, you disappoint us, you refuse to help. You have not failed us. We, are, we refuse to be disappointed. We refuse. We, the, our knowledge is that you are not the one God wants to use. You are not the person the Holy Ghost wants to use. What God will do, he will do. He didn't tie it to you. He didn't tie it to my uncle. He didn't tie it to Nigerian palliatives. He didn't tie it to the government or the governor. He said, but my God shall supply. Yay! He is the one who is supplying. So I trust the one that is going to make the supply. My God shall supply. All my need, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The dimension of your faith that brings you rest in Jesus is what will command the effectual workings of God in this new year. Look at it. Let me show you. In Romans chapter 3, verse 28. Romans 3, 28. Let's run quickly. Thank you, precious Jesus. I want to, I'm challenging your heart and your faith to go this year and refuse any religious leader taking you as a slave for a new year. Refuse it. I, I dare you this year not to do those 21 days fasting and prayer. Don't do that 7 days fasting and prayer. Don't do that 50 days fasting and prayer. You, you see, you are, a lot of Christians are too afraid because they don't know Jesus for themselves. The Jesus you know, the God you know, is the one that the Jew told you. Is the one that the bishop told you. Is the one that the apostle told you. Is the one that the pastor told you. You have not met with Jesus yet. The day you meet with Jesus, ah, elegbete, elgue. The day you meet with Jesus, this Jesus I am teaching about. The day you meet with Him, and I pray in Jesus' name that you will meet with Him right now through this teaching in the name of Jesus. That the scales will fall off your eyes. That your mind will become open. Your heart will become open to the truth. In the name of Jesus. Look at it. In Romans chapter 3 verse 28. See the Bible. He said, therefore, we conclude. That this is a conclusion. It's a conclusion. It's a concluded matter. We conclude that a man is justified by faith. Without the deeds of the law. Without performance. Without performance. A man, it's a conclusion. There is a conclusion now. Remember, you and I have become a member of the Senate of Heaven. The highest decision 
making body of heaven. So in this Senate, in this Senate, in this Mount Zion, the General Assembly of the Church of the Firstborn, in this Senate, Agula, Daga, Shataya, Negetebo, Elebosa, Gadagaria, you and I, we have concluded with God that a man is justified only by faith without the deeds of the law. Bam. And your justification, let me give you another good news. Your justification for this year, you are justified, I'm telling you, only by faith. You don't need the works of the law. Don't fall back into performance. Don't fall back into depending on other things. Don't let somebody give you man to this year. Don't let somebody give you a bottle of water this year to carry. Look, the people, the man, the man giving people man to to carry as their defense, as their protection, as their power, as their whatever. The man is going about with mobile police. He has police security guard. P police, mobile police are protecting him. Let him to carry man to and tell those police people to leave him. Then we will see. Elijah did not carry police with him. As a matter of fact, the police, the soldiers that came to arrest him, you know what Elijah did with them? A lot of, a lot of people in the body of Christ are so gullible. They've been so brainwashed. They can't think for themselves no more. And then when they meet a man of God that Jesus sent with the simplicity of the gospel like myself, they get angry. Because we don't give them tools. We don't give you things to carry. Because I don't give you man to. Because I didn't give you Goya oil in the name of anointing oil. How can somebody carry olive oil, give you? They say it's anointing oil and you are carrying it about. What is wrong with you? When will you wake up? Don't you understand? The Bible said in 1 John, he said you, you yourself, you are the bottle of the anointing oil. You are the bottle. He said for you, the anointing is in you. The, the new bottle of God's anointing oil now, right now is human being. He doesn't use physical bottle anymore. There, there's no ororo, you know, vegetable oil, uh, olive oil anymore. No. You and I, we are the bottle. I am the bottle of the anointing. And the anointing now is the Holy Ghost. It's in me. He said the anointing dwells in me. That's what he said. The anointing is in me. The anointing is in you. Stop carrying these things about. In Ephesians 1, Paul said to the church at Ephesus, he said, when I heard of your faith in Jesus, not your faith in bottle, not your faith in mantle. No, what are you doing? What are you doing? This year, don't go in that direction this year. Yeah, don't go in that direction. You need to be persuaded about Jesus this year. I came to persuade you about Jesus. That no matter what, you are going to stay focused. That this Jesus will come through. Aya, he can't fail. Jesus will not fail. He won't fail. So our justification this year is only the requirement for our justification this year is faith. Whatever you want God to do for you this year, the requirement for being justified to get that help from God this year is your faith. Is your faith. I'm going to say it again. It's your faith. Yeah, it's your faith. Oh, it's your faith. You don't have to wake up by 5 a.m. to pray for God for you to be justified. You can pray at any time and then get better. You are a spirit. Don't limit yourself to physical position for physical uh, experience. Don't limit yourself to it. You know, a lot of people, when they want to pray, they will put clock, watch, clock in front of them and they are praying. They are looking at time. Yay! Yeah. When you should follow the prompting of the spirit. When you should follow the leading of the spirit. For it is written in Romans chapter 8. As many as are led by the spirit. Not time, not clock. As many as are led by the spirit of God. They are. They are the ones who become. They are the ones who enter into God's mind. God's, God's purpose. God's success. God's idea. God's uh, uh, will for their lives. Push that clock aside. Look, you might... It, when the spirit of God prompts you to pray. It might just be for... 30 seconds. That 30 seconds, eternity cannot buy it. I'm telling you. So you have to learn to depend by faith on the workings of God. You are a spirit being. Stop trying to live like a physical man. You are a spirit man, a man that is spirit who lives inside a body. Your body should not dictate to you the workings of the spirit. Ah! 
Your body shouldn't. Your body should, don't 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 fall back on fasting. Don't fall back on carrying mantle. Don't fall back on time. No, no, no. A thousand times no. We don't live by time no, no more. We die to time. We are alive to the Spirit. We are alive to the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say with me, I am dead to time. I am dead to physical living. I'm a spirit man. I cannot be held down. I'm a spirit being. Come on, go ahead. Make that confession with me. I'm a spirit being. This year has no choice. It has to favor me. I cannot be predicted. I cannot be held down. I'm a spirit being. My faith is in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. My ways are open this year. This year I'm blessed. I'm blessed this year. My going is blessed. My path is clear. It's a shining path. Yeah, my path is a shining path. The devil can't hold me down. Sickness will not survive my body. In the name of Jesus, from within my spirit, I declare healing for my body. I speak soundness of mind for myself. I declare financial prosperity. I declare my, my family is protected. I speak from the realm of the spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. I hear that the Sato Karabada. I'm telling you, I feel this thing. I, I, I have a strong sense of the Holy Spirit, the anointing here. If, if you are keen to this thing, I'm sure you'll be perceiving the same thing. The Spirit of God is so strong here. Thank you, precious Father. So, our justification this year is coming free. Ah, Remember, we are justified only by faith. The qualification for our justification is faith. And because it is faith, our justification is free. You don't pay the price for your justification. Don't let anybody tell you you need to pay the price. You have to pay the price. No, that's a lie. That's a lie. Let me show you quickly. In Romans chapter 3, verse 24. Quickly. That they put it verse 24. Put verse 24. The same chapter 3. Romans 3, 24. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Being justified. Look at how we got justified. Being ju I didn't say it. It's not my word. These are not my words. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Somebody paid the price for our justification. So, my justification with God to make sure that things work for me this year came freely. It's free. Stop the mentality of you need to pay the price. You know, you know when you sit under a lawyer, a teacher, a law teacher, you know, people who preach the law. I'm I mean the law, the Old Testament law of Moses. When you sit under them, they can be so convic convicting and convincing. Ah, when you hear condemnation, you will begin to cry. You will start crying. I remember many years ago when I got born again. <laughs> That's many, many years ago. I just got born again newly. There's this brother from Deeper Life. That used to come and you know preach to me to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. You know. But every time he comes, instead of preaching Jesus Christ to me, he will just condemn everything around me. And I see your shirt. You, are, you will not make it to heaven. See your tie. Uh, and that time I used to wear Jericho. You know. Uh, see your Jericho. You know, I so I got fed up. One day and I told him, I said, please. His name is uh, Brother Sonny. I said, Brother, brother, brother Sonny, please. I ban you from coming to my house. If I have to go to hell, let me go. It's not of your business. You know? So I, I drove him. I told them, anytime anybody sees him around my house, in my compound, or he comes to ask for me, they should attack him. You know, because he never told me about Jesus. All he kept telling me about are the things that I have that I shouldn't have. And I see your wristwatch. Your wristwatch is too uh, 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 worldly. Uh, you will not make it to heaven with it. I got tired of all those talk. You know? So finally... Somehow, in the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of, of God, I got born again. When I got born again, all the bitterness and the hatred left. You know, joy, the peace of God in my heart. I started looking for him to tell him, hey, brother, he, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for him, I'm born again. So finally, one day I saw him on the road. I ran and I embraced him. I said, brother, Sunday, I'm born again. I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. You know, as I'm talking, I'm 
I'm, I'm so excited and I'm shedding tears. I said, Jesus loves me too, so much. Jesus loves me so much. You know, he, st he stood there cold. He looked at me and said, bro, bro James, don't be deceived. Anybody can say they are born again, but they will still go to hell. I said, what is it, Brother Sunday? Brother Sonny, forget about that. Jesus loves me. I said, Jesus, I, I, I'm born again. He now told me, okay, to come to their fellowship. They used to have one house fellowship around my house. So I decided to go to the house fellowship. We got to the house fellowship. The house fellowship leader, they did uh, opening prayer. They, worship, they, they, they sang one or two songs. You know, the whole thing boring. I'm like, no, let's let's celebrate Jesus. This Jesus is too excited. More than this, you know. I just got born again, man. You know. Then the house fellowship leader said, Brother John, you are not thinking of heaven. You are thinking of the earth. You know, your mind is corrupt. You shall go to hell. The brother, the John in the Bible was not like that. Brother John started crying. Brother, this. So, 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 brother, so started crying. Sister Sarah, and hey, look, what have you, blah, blah, blah. Sister Sarah started crying. Then, brother Timothy, Timothy started crying. Then, brother John, brother Sonny, that invited me. Brother Sonny, eh? Have you, have you, have you sought God with all your heart? Oh, you are just still doing, Lord, I've come. And again, you have gone. Now, Lord, I've come. Brother Sonny that brought me started crying. Everybody started crying except me. So I raised my hand. I said, sir, can I say something? He said, bro, you can't say anything. You are not crying. <laughs> I said, why? I now spoke of, why should I cry? Why are you people crying? Don't you? Is it not the same Jesus I have you people have? Why are you sad? Why are you mourning? Why, why are you... Doing as if Jesus is bad news. Jesus is, and I didn't even know anything yet in the Bible. You know, I just got born again. I'm just excited. I just love Jesus. You see, these people want to be justified by works, by what they are able to do. But the Bible said we we are not justified by works. Our justification is free because somebody paid for it. This year does not have a choice. What we desire will come to pass. That is how determined by faith we are in the name of Jesus. How many fasting and prayer did Dan Gote do to become the richest man in Africa? Stop that now. How can me, a man, a, a child of God, with the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, I'm subjected to all kinds of rubbish because I want a year to be good for me? What are you talking about? Dan Gote is building, is building refinery. This man is not even a born again Christian. He's building refinery in a country and after the refinery begins to work Dan Gota is going to become the richest man in the world and yet he's not doing 50 days fasting if you do any stupid 100 days or 50 days fasting this year may God forgive you go out by faith your justification is free somebody paid the price for it and the, the name of the person is Jesus the Bible said in Romans chapter 4, in verse 16, put NIV. Let me show you Romans chapter 4. Oh, my time is fast spent. I might probably have to do part 2 of this thing. In Romans chapter 4, verse 16, look at what the Bible says. Put it up, please. Romans 4, 16. See, look at, look, see it yourself. Look at it. Therefore, the promise. Therefore, the promise. The promise of Job. Business, good accommodation, food on the table, pay students school fees, good health, sound mind, whatever it is, the promise comes by faith. Yay! See how the promise comes. Yay! Where is Roxy Mania? See, see, see how the promise comes. The promise comes by faith. I wish I can say that to uh, Apostle Ezekiel. Apostle Ezekiel, are you seeing what I'm saying? Le Gabaja. Who else can I say it to? Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul in Canada. Are you hearing this thing? Yeah, it doesn't matter what the devil uh, is doing, what the devil has done. It doesn't matter what two thousand this new year holds for everybody else. But as for you and I, sought after. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As for you and I, the Bible said the promise comes by faith. The manifestation of the promise awaits our faith. 
Not all this our jamboree. Not all this uh, our performances. No. Our, the manifestation of God's promises for us. It awaits, it awaits our faith. Yeah. I feel like standing up and running around. Jesus have mercy on me. Agadabazada. Look. Agadabazada. He said the promise comes by faith. So that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all. To that, ah, it is by faith. So that nobody said, well, nobody can boast. Well, me, I did 100 days fasting. You, you couldn't do 100 days. So you are not sure of this year. He said the promise will manifest by faith. So that it can be guaranteed, can be sure to everybody. Whoa! Alege soto! Eme gutaga! Yagande lete sukabara yaga! E gragada! Le gaga! Look! This year we have come! What are you talking about? We have come! We have landed! We have come! Like, we have landed like Landa brothers! We have come! This year has no choice! E laga! The promises we take, we, we take, if it, if it has to take human form to be manifested for us, it will this year. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We are not going down. What are you talking about? Failure. It will be recorded as success. Everything we touch this year will come out sound. Work well for us in the name of Jesus. I will have to do part two of this because I have not even reached half of my teaching. You know, I can spend a week on this. He said, therefore, the promise comes by faith. It came, it will only come by faith. It's not going to come by seven days fasting. You know, don't let any pastor, any man of God, drag you into uh, this year. We're going to do seven days uh, prayer. Uh, if, if you want, you can pray. There's nothing wrong with it. We're going to do, uh, we're going to do, look, stop that. Stop that. You need to develop yourself first in the word of God. Not all those performance. You know, you need to, the promise only comes by faith. That is why it is guaranteed everybody. Nobody has upper hand over the promise. Nobody is more advantaged concerning the promise of God than the other person. Because it is the same standard. And what is the standard? Faith. Faith this year is the standard. Faith is the standard. I don't, you don't have to envy anybody. Faith is the standard. I'm not, I'm not talking to you. If you are at the hospital and then you are sick, don't, don't feel condemned that you are not able to do fasting this year. Therefore, God will not do X, Y, Z for you. I command in the name of Jesus that your expectations are granted in Jesus' name this year. Whatever your condition, some of you are so weak. You have weakness of the body. You are not able to do all the performances the rest of the Christians are doing. Let me tell you, the same God is rich unto all that call upon his name. Just call out to the name of Jesus. He will reach out to you. He loves you. Don't let somebody make you feel bad that you are not able to do all those performances. You don't need to dance for God to do anything for you. No. You don't need, you, we were not dancing when Jesus went on the cross. We were not even born yet. How do you not think that it's your dancing that would that Jesus has tied the manifestation of your blessing. It's not. It's not. I beg you a thousand times, no, it's not. Don't let anybody tell you because you can't sing that song or you're not singing a particular worship song or a particular praise song. Therefore, the manifestation of your blessing, of the things that God has for you or you ask God for will not happen this year. That's a lie of the devil. It's a lie of the devil. He said the promise comes by faith. That's why it's sure. It's a guarantee. It's for everybody. Look, let me tell you, this year, I need you to join me. Join me to propagate this gospel. I, look, like you have never done before. I'm begging you in the name of Jesus. Please don't let me beg you, but I have to beg you. If I have to beg you, I will. I beg you in the name of, I use Jesus to beg you. Join me, support me financially to push this teaching, this message to this generation. I've made up my mind. By the help of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, this year, we will so teach the truth that the spirit of religion will leave the body of Christ. I know that a lot of people will be angry with me, a lot of ministers. So, you know, as I've been getting messages from ministers, you know, a lot of them are angry. Some of them are very happy. You know, some of them are angry that, look, you are making Christianity too simple. This is the truth. I'm not making it simple. I'm bringing Christianity the way it is. Somebody has paid the price for us. And then we need to keep our focus on that person. His name is Jesus. Look, if every month you can help me with 
X, Y, Z amount to keep running this thing. It cost me a lot, you know, on data and diesel to burn diesel, you know, you know to, to to run the generator for for us to keep this program going. And then my workers, you know, the people working with me, you know, to get to get everybody run. I I want to challenge you to help me, help me to 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 conquer the spirit of religion in the body of Christ. Look, all these fake and false prophets everywhere. That is good. Look at the way they are expanding. It's somebody that is giving them money. It's somebody that is sponsoring them. I wish half of those people would sponsor me. You know, the Bible said we must stop. That's what Paul said to Timothy. He said we must stop the mouth of this man. He said we must stop their mouth. You know, but no man goes to work he said, at his own expense. Somebody has to support and finance him. I need you to help me. You know, don't let us become stingy at not making this thing go out. You know, I know that all those, all these religious people, you know, they won't want to send me money to preach this thing. But you, that you are coming into this knowledge, and the Lord Jesus Christ is tearing up the truth inside of your heart. Join me, help me. You know, send me money to do it. You know, I beg you in the name of Jesus. I need money to to keep this thing going. I'm not asking for money for food. Jesus is so faithful to me. There is food in my house, but I need money to you know put these things on on TV, on social media. Every month, you can commit to give, even if it's 20,000 naira every month. You, every, look, this year, you can decide to give me $1,000. This year. You know, split it. $100 every month. You can do it. And I trust the Lord Jesus Christ for you in Jesus' name. That the Lord will financially stabilize you to come alongside me. And let's do this thing together. In Jesus' precious name. And I love you. I'm going to have to do a part two of this teaching. Because this is very strong in my spirit. This year. Ah. This father, the devil has gone. He will go no further. He will not take the body of Christ for a fool anymore. Because we're going to take our place. Through knowledge. And the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Alright. You know we will not go. We will not end this broadcast. Without me asking you to give. This is the first Sunday of a new year. I'm going to ask you to give. Wherever you are, give, reach out. You know, once we're done, once we're done, take your phone and do a transfer in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know, do to Zenith Bank. They're going to put it up on the screen so that you can see. You know, you can do your offering to Zenith Bank 1001-488-167. The account number again is 1001-488-167. You know, and if you have any question you want to ask me, you know, please. Uh, send me a message on my WhatsApp. Or if you want to encourage me, please. You know, those of you who have been sending me messages on WhatsApp to encourage me, thank you so much. You know, your encouragement goes a long way. On that day when we shall meet Jesus for judgment, may the Lord count it for good for you, for encouraging me to bring this gospel to my generation. Thank you. I never preach about myself. I don't tell people what I have or don't have. I don't preach about man. My gospel is the gospel of Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. So if you want to uh, send all your offering, please do. And then if you want to send me a message, use my WhatsApp number to send me the message. You know, And the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you again. And welcome to the first Sunday of a new year. That's my WhatsApp number. Plus 234 you know, I love you and I thank God for you in the name of Jesus. Wherever you're watching, please share this teaching. Share it. It's urgent. Share this teaching right now. Share it. Send it to somebody. You know, especially those that denomination is holding bound and trying to cripple their faith. Send it to them. It will challenge somebody in Jesus' name. Please, I'm waiting to hear from you in Jesus' precious name. I love you and God bless you. Also, until I see you again, this is AVJ, Apostle Victor James. And I am... Signing out. God bless you. Bye-bye.